Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll review the DMAIC roadmap again and dig a little deeper into the third layer of the analyze phase of DMAIC. Just as with the define and measure phases, this third layer will serve like a roadmap to navigate you through the different tools and resources necessary when working through the analyze phase of a DMAIC project. So let's begin again by looking at the five basic steps for resolving a problem. Previously, we, we introduced the five basic steps for resolving a problem. And then we applied those five basic steps to the DMAIC methodology, the five phases of the Six Sigma DMAIC methodology. And last time in the lesson, we had also talked about the high-level questions we would ask for each of those phases in the DMAIC methodology. We also took that a step further. That's what we call level one. That is, at the top level, we have each of these different questions that we're asking for each of the phases within the DMAIC methodology. So we dug last time into taking those, those questions to another layer, a second layer, going a little deeply like this, where for the each phase, again, we've got the defined phase where we have the top level question that we're asking ourselves. And again, we said, if you cannot answer yes to that question, then you ask yourself the second layer of questions that are in here. And here's a guide for the different tools or resources that can help you in helping to answer those questions. And that can ult ultimately help you in answering this top level question. And what we said is that the goal is to try to answer each of these top level questions for each phase. And then as you do answer yes to those questions, then you move on to the next phase and then to the sub questions within those phases and so on all the way through the control phase. That's the introduction again to what we did last time when we talked about the level one and level two questions for the DMAIC roadmap. Okay, now let's dig a little deeper into looking at the third layer of the analyzed phase of DMAIC. We're going to go beyond the level one and level two of the roadmap and for the analyze phase what we're going to dig into is now the level three. This is where we're going to be asking additional questions at a deeper level where we're going to get into the specific tools that we would see to help navigate through the project at least through this analyze phase. So for the analyze phase this is what it looks like at the level three. So we're going to start off again at the top level, level one, the same question. Can you statistically validate what are the root causes or what are those inputs or X's like we would usually try to identify and validate for the transfer function. And then within there we want to ask ourselves again these level two questions. We're going to start off with this first level two question. Do you know what the process capability is that is also known as the voice of the process or VOP? Well in order to really answer that we need to ask ourselves these next sub questions in here at the level three. First one we would ask ourselves is have you assessed the statistical characteristics of your data? That is like figuring out what the mean, the standard deviation are, the median or the mode, some of those general characteristics. If you haven't then you might want to use the descriptive statistics to figure out what those general statistical characteristics are of your data. Next you want to find out then do you know if your process is stable? Well you might use an IMR chart to figure that out. And also, do you know if your process distribution is normal or non-normal? Well, you would use a normality plot using the Anderson-Darling test, for example, to figure that out if it's normal or non-normal. And the last third level question you'd ask here is, do you know what your key process capability measurements are? For example, like the DPMO, which is defects per million opportunities, or DPU, which is the defects per unit, or Z-score, or signal level, or percent effective, or CPK, and that sort of thing. Well, those are all elements that we might find as part of figuring out the process capability. Like in Minitab, it uses process capability with six-pack. Those are among the key metrics that we might use to figure out the process capability. By answering all these things, then that should help us to answer this level two question, and we should know what our true voice of the process is. Now, personally, I like to use this element for the process capability within the analyze phase. Some folks prefer to include that like in the measure phase, Personally, my preference is to leave the measure phase for the time when you're trying to identify and select your data and to validate whether you can really trust your data to make sure you're gathering reliable data that you'll eventually do analysis on. And then I tend to exclusively use the analyze phase for actually doing analysis on that data. And part of that analysis and using the data requires looking at the process capability as evidenced through that data that you've collected, hopefully the data that you can rely on as you've been able to prove out through the measure phase. So this is my personal preference to include this. Other folks agree and then there's some who might disagree but it does at least show that we're in agreement in the order that you might follow these but some folks might change the phase and this happens to be one of those elements where some folks might include process capability in an earlier phase instead. The next second level question though we want to ask ourselves is, do you know what the target sigma level or the performance objectives are for the project? Well now that you know the process capability, you'll be able to compare that to the voice of the customer, the VOC, and be able to figure out what are your performance objectives that you need to set for the project. 
And then the next second level question we're going to ask ourselves is, have you done hypothesis testing to identify which potential x's are statistically significant? Well, if you haven't done that, if you can't answer yes to that question, then here are the third level questions we want to ask ourselves. And all these questions at the third level, these are among the questions that, that we'll be reviewing to show how you go through the hypothesis testing when you're trying to analyze each x. So it starts off with asking this question of, have you identified the yes or no question for the practical problem of each potential x? And then next, have you converted the practical problem into a statistical problem for each potential x? And next, what you want to do is have you ask yourself, have you identified for every potential x the right statistical test based on the data type, like whether it's continuous or discrete, and also the test type, whether you're going to be looking into proportions or central tendency or spread or relationships, as well as looking at the comparison level, how you're going to compare your data, whether it's one to a standard, like a target or a goal, or comparing one to one evaluations, or maybe there's more than one factor, that you're, or more than two factors that you're looking at. All these are elements to help figure out what is the right statistical test on which you're going to do your hypothesis testing. Next question you might ask yourself is have you interpreted the statistical results for the test on each potential x? Well, you don't just run the test, you have to be able to interpret the results from the test to figure out from there uh, whether it's really going to be a critical factor or not. You have to be able to, to interpret the information from that test. And then you find yourself with the last question, have you translated the statistical results into a practical solution that answers the original practical problem for each potential x? Now what this is really asking at this third level like this, this isn't just one step where you do all these for every one of your x's one at a time moving down the line, but for each x you'd ask yourself all these questions at this third level. So you go through the first x and you might walk through all these questions, then your second x or input that you're looking at and go through these questions again and third one and so on until you've worked through all the x's on which you're doing your hypothesis testing. And once you've been able to do that for all of your x's that you're evaluating, then you should have as an output for this whole analyze phase. You should have a project storyboard that you've updated with the key information from your findings as well as you should have your key process capability metrics that you first identified up here at the top. And then also now you should have all the results from all the hypothesis testing that was done on all the x's with the y that you're looking at. Now with all this information at this point you should be able to answer this top level question for the analyze phase and you should now be able to say that you can statistically validate what are the root causes based on the data you collected, based off of this hypothesis testing and everything you've done in your data, you should now figure, you should know which ones are the root causes. This would now prepare you for moving on to the next phase once you can answer yes to this, now you can move on to that next phase which is the improve phase. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. What I'd like you to do is try to identify at least two projects that you've led or maybe you've worked on in the past within your organization. For each of those projects, try to review all those questions at least through the third layer within the analyze phase that we just went over in that level three roadmap. And then for each of those, ask these questions. For example, what questions and related tools or resources were not addressed, addressed within each project? And then why were they not addressed? And then what different outcome or results could have been realized if those items were all addressed when you first went through the project? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.